yeah, isn't that true, right? <laughs> the title of Jack Cornfield's book, right? After the ecstasy, the laundry. <laughs> and what happens is that, to quote another uh, teacher, the great Tibetan um, sage Milarepa, describing his own life of practice, in the beginning, nothing came. In the middle, nothing stayed. In the end, nothing left. And I think that's how it is. Uh, in the beginning, maybe we try to meditate and we can't drop into the state of peacefulness. Nothing's coming. We, we try, it just doesn't come. Then if we stick with it, usually, in meditation and also in other things that we might cultivate, like a quality of patience or a quality of appreciating others or a quality of kindness applied even toward ourselves. As we stick with it, we start being able to feel these things, but they're not yet stabilized as traits. They're not yet hardwired stably into our own nervous system. So in the middle, nothing stays. Most of us, you're in the middle. <laughs> you're able to feel it when I'm reminding you to, and you dedicate a, time, a certain time to it. But when you enter into the very understandable rush and stress and hurly-burly of the typical day, huh, that sense of peacefulness is not so stable. It doesn't stay. Yet, over time, progressively, with practice, one breath at a time, one synapse at a time, you can gradually increase traits of things like peacefulness or patience or appreciating others or kindness toward yourself. And then as you develop these stable, these stable traits in yourself, nothing leaves. More and more, it's your resting state. You can still maybe get triggered into one thing or another, but you recover more quickly. And even while you're dealing with the day and rushing about, some anxiety here, some irritation there, underneath it all, in sort of the wallpaper of your mind, the inner atmosphere, the climate, your inner climate, even as some storms blow through, is increasingly colored by whatever you've cultivated of mindfulness and presence, open-heartedness, loving kindness, patience and wisdom. And that's how the process goes. That's how the process goes. And I think that's extremely hopeful. It's realistic. It's real. Practice matters. Uh, depending on temperament and history, biology and privilege or disadvantage, lack of privilege, um, these things affect the rate at which we can heal and grow. But it's absolutely sure that unless there's some fundamental underlying biological, physiological issue with the hardware of the body and the nervous system, unless there's some kind of really fundamental medical issue that's serious, steady practice produces steady results over time with occasional breakthroughs. And all the while, you can keep in mind, even as you engage this developmental process, all the while, underneath it all, there's who you already are. Wakeful, present, benevolent, wise, virtuous. That's who we are underneath it all, without any reference to anything cosmic or metaphysical. And if you want to extend into that as the ground of the ground of all, well, that's who we really are. You know, that's our deepest nature. And that's good news. All the while, we're developing ourselves along the way.